Hello and welcome to Distance Learning. All right, um, so we're going to go through some self portraiture stuff, look at some people who are working in that medium. Um, some of them, most of them are not super old. Some of them are, uh, but most of them are on the recent -er, or at least a good chunk of them are on the recent -er side of things. Uh, some of them you'll probably like, some of them you'll hate, but that's kind of the whole point. Um, this is all for assignment two, which is going to be a self-portraiture project where you will end up with three, count them, three self-portraits um, that are going to be different from one another in some way. Uh, so let's roll through who we got. Um, up first, this is Nikki S. Lee. Nikki S. Lee um, is, I, don't know, I think most of this work she was making in the, what does that say on there, 1998, so a while ago, um, which when it was made, like keep that in the back of your mind as you're thinking about its many problematic aspects. Uh, so Nikki S. Lee is an uh, Asian woman and she goes into these various um, cultural groups and assumes an identity that is part of that group and then the work is made um, coffee. Uh, the work is made by other people that she is there with who are snapping pictures with her camera, right? So they're not in on it. They think she's just whoever she's appearing to be. Um, she makes these images that are um, of her and her sort of cohort hanging out, doing their thing, um, whatever. So uh, here she is in the Hispanic project um, where she uses makeup and costume and our assumptions about how groups of people might dress uh, to fit in and portray herself as Hispanic. Um, the hip hop project, I guess because she couldn't say, look at me, I'm black. I'm not totally sure there. Right? So, Hispanic project again. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's her being a poor white person. Uh, here she is as uh, an old lady. Um, I think you know. So a, this is kind of crazy. B, there are some deeply problematic things going on here, right? I think we can all agree on that. Um, Nikki Lee is worth looking into. She's worth looking up, doing some Googles, uh, looking at her work and look, looking at what people have said about her work. Um, I think it's interesting to think about why the old people ones feel initially less problematic than, uh, say, this image. Um, so I think thinking about all those things is important. I think thinking about when the pictures were taken and whether this was something that people thought they, why this is something people thought they could get away with, um, looking at the cultural reaction then and now. Um, anyway, Nikki S. Lee, worth checking out. Um, if anyone is thinking I'm going to do my self-portraits in blackface, for fuck's sake, don't do it, all right? Just getting that out of the way, don't do it, no, bad, uh, wrong. Um, Jillian Waring. Jillian Waring is... Also, notice they're one after the other. Um, also someone who is assuming the face of um, a different person, sort of. Uh, but here she is as her mother, right? So you can see, point to this, right? Um, there's sort of little like openings around the eyes. Uh, so she's making a prosthetic mask, which she then inhabits as these various people, in this case, her mom. Uh, this is uh, her as herself, 
at age three, right? So again, big old prosthetic face, um, smaller sized head of like, or normal sized head, big small person head um, that she is wearing to pose as her three-year-old self. Ah. Um, here she is as a grandmother. I mean, this is kind of interesting because I feel like the, you know, the seams, as it were, in this are much less obvious. Um, and I feel like without something like this image, which is distinctly creepy, um, I wouldn't necessarily get this one as much. Um, you know, I don't know if it being more seamless or less seamless is more effective. You know, I think that probably in the context of seeing all of the work together, you know, you kind of get it. Uh, her as her father. Um, here we have another one, this one in color. Self-portrait at 17. Um, I think there's an interesting idea here about going back to a previous self, right? The idea that if I take a self-portrait of me now, how different that is, how different I am from the self-portrait that would be showing me, you know, me five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, are those distinct people? Are they the same person, right? What does it mean to go back and revisit those people? What does it mean that you can only do that in one direction, right? I can't as easily take a future self-portrait. Um, Vivian Meyer, right? Everybody sees Vivian Meyer. I am not going to talk about her. I guess I am. Uh, so I include Vivian Meyer because I feel like she is difficult not to include um, because I think for a lot of people she was um, this sort of interesting introduction to photography, to self-portraiture. Um, she has a great backstory. It's a very sort of like grabby narrative, right? Um, I think there's a lot of like weird dismissive misogyny underlying some of that, right? Where part of the narrative is like, ooh, she was a nanny, but she also took these pictures. She must have been a crazy person, right? All of those things which are sort of like, can't you just like have a job and be good at taking pictures, right? Like, aren't, aren't those things okay, right? We don't need to have necessarily this like dealer coming in and validating it by putting it out into the market. Like, is the market the only thing that gives it value? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so again, here we have a self-portrait where the technology is present. You can think a little bit about that with regards to Jillian Waring, right? And that we see those seams, we're made aware of the fact that this picture is being made by someone. Um, here the fact that it is being made by her, right, is more obvious, whereas the authorship of the picture in, say, Nikki S. Lee is less clear. Um, Right, this one we sort of see the thing making the picture, we see the person being pictured, um, all that stuff, you know, and they're good photographs. I'm not saying that they're bad photographs. I don't know that they are um, as unexpected necessarily as some of the other stuff that we'll see, um, but they're good. Right? I think that there's also something in the camera that she's using, right? The twin lens reflex, which is a lower position, right? So it doesn't block out her face. It has those two eyes, one of which has the mirror, right? The taking lens obviously is exposed to the film. The other one often, as we see it in this, has this sort of white orb thing, right? Because that's where we're looking through that into the mirror up to the ground glass, and so it's sort of lit up. So there is this interesting... Um, presence of this photographic eye in the image, both, I guess, both eye, the letter I, like me, and I, what I initially meant, like eyeball. Um, Carrie Mae Weems, right, Kitchen Table Series. Um, so she's making this work which is about domesticity, right, which is about um, being a black woman. Um, whether or not that is necessarily being her, Right? Again, one of the things with self-portrait, who is the self that is being portrayed? How is that related or not to the actual photographer? Um, so Carrie Mae Weems is sort of setting up this almost theatrical, no, I'm going to go, it is theatrical, sort of theatrical stage set um, at her kitchen table to make these pictures which have symbolic in addition to literal content. Right? So it's not just showing us what Carrie Mae Weems looks like, right? That's not the point 
of these pictures. If you go and look at the Vivian Meyer pictures, right, one of the things that they do, right, they explore pattern, they explore aesthetics, they also show us who the photographer is. In these, we don't necessarily know that the person who is the author of the picture is also the person who is in the picture. Right? If you were like, hey, that's not Carrie Mae Weems, that's Dolores Jenkins, right? You'd be like, oh, huh, right? There's not immediately an awareness of who the person being depicted is. Um, I think that that can, in a symbolic portrait like this, be something which makes it a more general meaning, right? So it's less about the experience of specifically Carrie Mae Weems, right? And she can make it abstracted a little bit more to the experience of being a black woman, right? So things to think about in making a self-portrait, right? Who is the self? Who is the audience? Is it specific? Is it more general? Um, you know, the self can be one person. The self can be a group. Um, you know, the place where the self-portrait is taking or is being taken can be constructed. It can be meant to be read as authentic, right? The fact that in these, we have the same setting repeated multiple times, if we just had one picture, we could say, oh, all right, well, this was just like, she happened to be there and made this picture and this was this thing. The fact that the place repeats does help us see it as a stage set, as a more theatrical, symbolic photograph. Um, the fact that you're seeing them in a series, right? Let me sort of zoom in on these. Um, seeing them in this series, right, also gives them a narrative power, right? So seeing these things one after another after another, and this is something we'll talk about, you know, and that you will experience and have already no doubt been aware of in photography, is the way that working sequentially, you can tell a story by having a set of images, right? That we as a viewer read from one image to the next, that we make connections across those images to start to tell a story. 